Hello everybody and welcome back to the Chloe and Ludwig YouTube show. <laughs> a YouTube show, YouTube channel. Today's a special day because we're embarking on a new adventure. That's right. We're about to take our first ever long haul flight in premium economy with Scandinavian Airlines. Taking us from San Francisco to Copenhagen. And let me tell you, we're buzzing with excitement. From the moment we stepped into the airport, the anticipation has been building. Plus, this is my first time not on an economy seat. And I'm pretty excited because we've heard some really good things about SAS Plus, which is what they call it. It's got lots of legroom, delicious food, and I'm really hoping a cool amenity kit. So buckle up because you're coming along for the ride. Get ready to join us as we explore the perks of flying in style and take you on a journey across the skies with Scandinavian charm. And you know what's even more exciting, even more exciting about flying premium economy is that Ludwig is coming with me. He's only ever experienced economy before and today he's coming in a fancy flight with me. It's not business class, but it's a little bit more exciting. I'm really excited. Our journey began in Auckland, New Zealand, where we got to check in at this special premium spot at the airport. We were going to be flying with two different airlines during this trip. The first with Air New Zealand from Auckland to San Francisco. The second with Scandinavian Airlines from San Francisco to Copenhagen. Both of these, of course, are with Star Alliance, which I try to stick with as much as possible, as it helps me to continue racking up those status points so I can remain Star Alliance Gold, which is great because it allows me and a guest to enjoy various lounges around the world, including the Air New Zealand Lounge here in Auckland. It's one of my absolute favourites of the lounges I've been lucky enough to visit so far. If you're keen to see a bit more of this lounge, I go into detail in this video here. This is also where I experience Air New Zealand's business class for the first time, so it's a really fun one. Tonight I was super excited to see that we could order freshly made fish and potato dishes and this was really delicious. We finished up with a cocktail to celebrate and cheers to becoming husband and wife in just a few weeks. Because I might add, we're flying to Sweden to get married. We spent 12 hours in Air New Zealand's premium economy, and Ludwig loved every bit of it. Although, he's never quite as excited about these things as me. We didn't film too much on this flight, as I've already documented what it's like to fly long haul in Air New Zealand premium economy. It's really awesome. The food, the seat, and the service make the extra cost so worth it. But you can decide for yourself. We touched down in San Francisco, where we had a handful of hours to spend in transit. Here, you must collect your bags and recheck them. After doing so, we went back through security, ready to hang out in a lounge. As I mentioned, with Star Alliance Gold, I have access to various lounges around the world, including the United Club lounges in San Francisco Airport. But, a fun fact, if you are flying on SAS Premium Economy, this also grants you access to these lounges. Which, by the way, there seem to be a lot of at this airport. And you also get these little priority stamps on your boarding pass, so you can go through fast track security too. I was quite surprised by this, as with Air New Zealand, if you're flying premium economy, this doesn't actually give you any access to the lounge. Super friendly staff at Scandinavian Airlines check in desk, I must add. We follow the recommendation of an airline crew member who said we should visit the largest of the lounges. This United Club is located in Terminal 3 of the international part of the airport and is in the F concourse near gate F11. We were rather sad that there weren't shower facilities to use here, but we were excited about spending a few hours eating and drinking free stuff. The moment you enter the club, you'll walk down a long corridor, leading to a very grand lobby with marble floors and nautical themed decor. There are plenty of comfortable lounge chairs lined up against floor to ceiling windows as well as many workspaces, tables and chairs. There's a bar offering an array of wine and liquor. There are a handful of coffee machines, snack bars, soups, a nacho making station, a noodle station, cheese and crackers and even candy floss. Oh, and Ludwig was pretty excited about these little robot rubbish bins that seem to circle the place every now and then. Welcome to the United Club, honey. Cheers. We started off with a machine Americano and latte, which were very bitter and not that nice, but I guess any caffeine will do when you're this jet lagged. Following these, we grabbed some clam chowder and a few sweet treats, which was actually really tasty. Ludwig is turning into me. He's currently looking at the seat map to check if we have a good seat for our premium economy flight coming up. I've got the windows. So. You've got the window. 
good. That means that you're going to be on camera most of the time then. I'll film you. I can swap. <laughs> this is the bounciest and slowest treadmill at the airport I've ever been on. Look how slow we're going. Just each step is effortless because you just bounce right off. Following a very quick and seamless boarding process, which by the way, SAS Plus includes priority boarding, we are welcomed into our home for the next 11 hours-ish. Scandinavian Airlines Premium Economy, AKA SAS Plus. And this is on an Airbus A330-300. The seating configuration in here was a 232. So I, of course, booked us on the side so that we had our own little spot. There is nothing worse than being a frequent peer and being sandwiched between people on a long haul flight, in my eyes anyway. The seats were wide and had plenty of legroom, including these nifty little footrests. But the seats up front do have leg rests, if you prefer. Side note, we did notice the overhead bins had a lot less room on this flight than our Air New Zealand flight, but it still fit all of our bags and my wedding dress with ease. We had some basic headphones, a bottle of water, these cute little tray things that kind of flicked out from the side, and a table that came out like this. We had a blanket, a very plush pillow, there was an extremely flexible, adjustable headrest. You could really lock your head in here. And we were rather surprised at just how far back the seat reclined. Let me tell you, this seat is better than their New Zealand seat because it goes further back. It goes from this position, right, to this. There's no one behind me, so just make that clear. There was a 12-inch TV with a rather impressive selection of movies and TV, including a great variety of horrors and thrillers. Yes! There was also power outlets and USB ports. Very handy. Oh, I might add, there is Wi-Fi available on here for an additional fee. We were to be served two meals on this flight, but it was also nice to see that we had a selection of free snacks and drinks available, if we fancied. flight we have to watch the boogeyman because it's safer she says to watch scary movies on a plane than just to watch them at home yuck i love it when i somehow convince ludwig to watch a scary movie with me i just said there's a lot of people around us it's less likely that the baddie is going to get him doesn't make any sense because there are more potential scary men on the plane than it is in my house Honey, while we're here, can you tell them about your first initial impressions of SAS Premium Economy seat? Well, the seat is divine. Also, this blanket is really nice. It's like thick. It feels like a real blanket. I might have a nap. So they just came out and, and gave us drinks and some nuts, which are pretty yummy. Yes, apparently before dinner we get a before dinner drink. When they give you that, they also ask what you want to drink with dinner. So I'm literally sat here with two bottles of wine. <laughs> two! just made a little announcement over the speaker about what we can expect for our meal service of, of course giving us a couple of different options and in true Scandinavian fashion we're gonna be served salmon and potatoes like a kartoffel yum oh the salmon is cooked to perfection oh my goodness it's so soft and so perfectly cooked oh my goodness That is really good airplane food. The salmon is really moist, soft. The potatoes are nicely cooked. There's some little veggies in here too. And it's piping hot. I love it when an airplane meal is really warm. 
I've got a cute little side salad, a cute little cake of some sort that also look phenomenal. And I'm rather excited to dig into this while watching the boogeyman. I have no idea what it is I'm eating. Some sort of sponge cake with strawberry cream and maybe melted meringue on top of that. It's not great. I'm still gonna eat it because I'm hungry. The food though was really nice. The salmon and potato, that was on point. Whatever that salad was, the uh, bean mozzarella salad, yum. The butter and bread, also very nice, yum. Good touch. I still think Air New Zealand wins on the food part. It definitely went on the service part. So far, SIS wins the chair, the reclining of the seat. And that is a big piece of cheese. cheese. I already had way too many cheeses at the lounge, so I'm not gonna eat my cheese. How's the cheese? I don't like it when cheese is orange. You just like blue cheese, that's why. I just like normal colored white beige cheese. I don't know, it feels wrong. <laughs> it's actually really fun doing a flight vlog with you though, honey, I must add. Thank you. It's great to get your input, actually. This is my first flight vlog with a microphone like this. Do you notice? Are you guys noticing this right now? I think it's pretty exciting. Following the boogeyman, I continued on to watch Don't Worry Darling. And oh my goodness, this has jumped to one of my favorite movies ever. If you like mysteries and thrillers and just weird stuff, you're going to love this. Ludwig and I didn't sleep much on this flight for a few reasons. One, we actually got a decent sleep on our first flight, maybe because it was overnight and we were tired from a day at work. By the way, if you're curious about these super trendy sleep masks, let's take a moment to talk about today's video sponsor, Mantasleep. Hey Ludwig, I'm so excited for our wedding in Sweden. Me too, Chloe, but I'm a bit worried about my sleep on the flight. Don't worry, I've got the perfect solution, Mantasleep. With Manta, we'll be able to get the quality sleep we need, so we can arrive feeling refreshed and ready for our big day. That sounds amazing. How does it work? Manta's ergonomic design provides ultimate comfort and support, ensuring we can sleep very comfortably even in crammed airline seats, or in our case, lounging out in premium economy. Wow, that's comfortable. But I heard they have a special offer for you. That's right, our viewers can get 10% off their Manta Sleep purchase just by using code Chloe and Ludwig. And it's the perfect way to upgrade your travel experience. Don't forget to grab your Manta Sleep mask and use code Chloe and Ludwig for 10% off. Sweet dreams. Number two, we said yes to a nice strong Scandinavian coffee or cafe as they say after dinner. Number three, this flight would have us landing early evening in Copenhagen. So by the time we grab our car and drive over to Sweden, it would be about bedtime and we didn't want to be awake all night. So perhaps subconsciously we were staying awake. During the flight, the flight attendants were very attentive to those who were awake, serving drinks and snacks, like this little sandwich here, which doesn't look like much, but was so yum. One of my favorite things to do on a flight is just to sit and stare at the flight map. It's so amazing to me how gigantic this earth is and how much of it we have yet to explore. It's also really fun to fly over the incredible destinations that we've visited so far. I was getting excited as we were about to fly over Greenland, a place I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd get to visit. But we did just a few years back when we were on our transatlantic cruise from Copenhagen to Boston. We actually made a whole series about that too, if you're keen. And somewhere after after passing Greenland, we were served breakfast, which I was honestly way too tired to even think about. But we still ate it anyway, of course. Now, I would say this is a very Scandinavian breakfast. It reminded me of our breakfast we had on the sidewalk in Copenhagen once. They really do love their bread with cured cold meat, cheeses, fruit slices, and coffee. I think I sat here in silence nursing this coffee for a while before I could even comprehend what was going on. The jet lag was seriously kicking in. Good morning. I think what I've come to realize, what we've both come to realize is that even if we are flying in premium economy, we don't want to do New Zealand to Copenhagen straight anymore. Nope. I think next time we're going to stop in Singapore. However, it has definitely made it a lot more comfortable having a premium economy seat, hasn't it, honey? 
big improvement, that's for sure. I don't think I slept on this flight. I definitely slept more on the Air New Zealand flight. You had too much coffee. Yeah, I always had too much coffee. I decided to do the Scandinavian thing and have a coffee after dinner, so that's what I get for joining you guys. Coffee after dinner. They have coffee after every single dinner when we're at his parents' house for dinner with like a group. It's coffee served after dinner every night. Super strong black Swedish coffee. I don't understand. I don't get it. What have you got to say for yourselves? Yep, it's yum. As we began our descent into Copenhagen, we spot the Oresund Bridge on the map. This bridge connects Copenhagen to Malmö, Sweden, spanning the Oresund Strait. The bridge is an iconic landmark and a vital transportation link between Denmark and Sweden, allowing for road and rail traffic. It consists of a bridge and a tunnel that actually goes underwater, giving the illusion of the road disappearing. Pretty cool. into this airport you are scandinavian yourself so you don't understand how pristine the style is look at the nice concrete the beautiful wood the wonderful lighting the minimalist vibe you know what i mean you don't notice it it's honestly so nice oh my gosh i love it like look at all that nice concrete Ludwig. look at the lighting under the handrail that is just so modern wow P.S. If you fly with SAS Plus from Copenhagen, it looks like you'll be in for a treat in the lounge department. This place looks awesome, and I'm pretty excited to visit it one day. We've t- 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 I'm very sleepy. We've touched down. Touched. Oh my god. We have touched down in Schöpenham, aka Copenhagen. First things first, we went to Lagkagehuset. Lagkagehuset which I've seen is like a chain over here and it's got really yummy baked goods. Oh my goodness, all the bread and the cookies and stuff look so good there. But we went for an oat milk latte, a large, and I can confirm the Danes know how to make good lattes. So if you are a coffee lover, I think you'll find yourself pretty okay here in Copenhagen. Overall, SAS Plus offered a nice balance between affordability and enhanced comfort without the cost of business class. For our trip, we paid $6,000 New Zealand for this one-way flight for the two of us, including our Air New Zealand flight. We did book this rather last minute, so this might not be a good indication of how much it normally is. But it is still just a fraction of what you'd expect to pay when flying in business. For us, this flight marked a pretty significant moment in our lives. We were literally flying across to the other side of the globe to finally tie the knot after five years of engagement. With a very eventful few weeks ahead of us, we think this investment was well and truly worth it. Not only for the enjoyment and to battle the jet lag somewhat, but to make this trip just that little bit more memorable. Let us know in the comments, is this something you would happily pay extra for? Would you instead splash out on business class or perhaps stick with economy? Thanks so much for joining us as we head to Sweden for our wedding. We would so appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. And as always, we would love it if you clicked subscribe. We have some seriously incredible adventures coming up this year, including lots of flights, cruises, and of course, sleeper trains. You won't want to miss it.